friends and welcome to my channel I'm Jolene and today we are viewing the last room inside the Josephine house so this is the last room of the tour and this is the 1930s farmhouse that I'm creating and the bathroom here is almost completed I'm almost finished I have a few more accessories and a little bit of hardware to install in here and then I can call this bathroom completed now it's a very small room it's the smallest room in the house and I had a lot to put in here I wanted to put so much in here and I had to figure out how I was gonna you know fit everything in a sensible way but the bathroom appliances are a Chris and Bond bathroom kit that I put together and I'm going to move a few pieces out of the way here to uh, begin with the wall. But really quick, I want to pan you up to the ceiling and give you a better view of this bathroom here and show you a water stain that I added to the ceiling up here. So I'm just giving you a whole view of the bathroom before we actually venture off inside and start talking about this space. So to begin with this little ladder before I remove these pieces, um, I made this little ladder towel rack with either chopsticks or skewers. And I actually have a similar ladder rack, a few pieces from a wooden ladder that look really similar to this and I just wanted to uh, create a little mini version of that and those pink towels there I've had in my stash since the early 90s and all I've done was replace the lace trim on those so let me remove some of these pieces out of the way so we can get a better look at the wall here now originally the wallpaper used to extend down to the floor and I had to modify that a little bit just to give it more of a early century 1930s feel. So I went in and installed this half tile wall that you see and added the black border trim around the top part. And then I all, all I did was really just go into random tiles and paint them pink just to match the wallpaper and went from there so you can see I aged it up a little bit there's a lot of grime on the walls you can see some grime in the grout and that was pretty much all I really all the modifying that I've done to the this room here okay to show you some of these pieces here that I pulled out I've got a few vintage magazines here and they have some beauty ads in them and some different ads in them but the granny really loves her woman's magazines so these ones here are actually my practice ones and the ones you see later on in my journey they'll look a lot better than these ones but I just cannot see throwing these away tiny friends because I just, I just couldn't get myself to throw these away but if I knew then what I know now these would look a lot better and you'll see some later on that will look a lot better but I thought these would be perfect in the bathroom because they're so shabby and each one has a different promotion ad for a Shirley Temple movie on the back and I just thought they look pretty old she likes to hang on to her you know her women's mags tiny friends but I thought they looked pretty old to go in the bathroom and you know it gets kind of there's a lot of moisture in the bathroom so but going to this chair here now this was something in my collection that I've had a while a very long time and it was an all wooden chair unfinished it didn't really fit any of my likings and I really thought I could modify it a bit so I sanded the legs down because they were super wide and now they're super pointy <laughs> but I added a little bit of um, trimming to it with air dry clay and using my silicone molds yeah and I also added the cushion to the seat there and I really do love that olive green but when I sat back and looked at this chair I just thought oh my goodness it's just so 
gaudy and god awful. <laughs> so I figured this has really got to be the ugliest chair in the house. And I thought maybe the bathroom would be a perfect place. It's just really too ugly to go anywhere else <laughs> unless I put it outside somewhere or maybe around the barn. But so this is the bath chair and I painted it up and distressed it a bit. And I just, yeah, it's pretty ugly, <laughs> but I love it so much in a weird way. So I, I just thought it was a perfect fit for that grimy bathroom up there. So that's where it sits. <laughs> oh, goodness. So now I'm going to show you these cute little house slippers, the granny's house slippers. And she wears these outside sometimes when she's collecting the mail or sometimes in the morning when she's feeding her chickens. So they're a bit dirty on the bottom. They have a really pretty pink lace on the top and an added rosebud. I know you really can't see the color of the lace there, but it's like a really light pink. Now I have paired these little slippers up with a vintage bullet bra. And I'm going to show you that bullet bra here. It's the granny's bra. It's really a granny bra. <laughs> and tiny friends, you can close this little bra. The clasp on the back allows it to be closed. But I really never had any experience making clothes other than when I was a kid making Barbie clothes but this is my true first attempt at making any type of miniature clothing including the slippers there so I decided to pair these up and I do have a set available on my website tinykeyhole.com and I'll put a link in the description box of course but I decided to pair them up as a cute little set for the bathroom and I'm gonna have to learn how to make some clothes later on because I'll be sculpting my Grammy and I'm really gonna need to dress her and place a few garments around the house but going to the tub here the clawfoot tub now I used to have one of these when I was a little girl and I would take a bath in them and I always remember them having a textured base to them on the outside and there was no gloss to the paint it was all matted it was almost like it was a layer of plaster that went over the tub structure to maybe preserve it for a longer life or keep it from rusting I'm not really sure but to me that's what I get from it and so I just used my chalk paint and a sponge and did the dabbing technique here and it left an amazing texture look and feel to it so it actually ended up looking pretty realistic from my memory of these cloth feet tubs <laughs> but inside are the hard water stains from the well you can see the ring around that tub um, I created a little soap holder or a little rack here that's hanging and I was inspired by the piece that's in the Chrysabon bathroom accessory kit that I do now have but I didn't think I was going to have one of those. So I added a little soap grind, some, uh, what is that? Soap scum from the bar of soap there. And also that little plug stopper there, now that is created from air dry clay. And in real life, those old plugs that they used to use get dry and brittle and crack. And if you're, because I remember what that feels like, and if your air dry clay doesn't have enough moisture to it, it will crack in that way. Now, these little shampoo bottles here on the bath bar, um, I created from polymer clay. And I also created the bath bar there. And then I have a couple pieces here. I have a shower cap and a wash rag and a scrub brush. And I've actually paired the scrub brush and the shower cap together as a set and it is available on my website but I'm also thinking now that I'm looking at these three pieces that I also need to include that wash rag in that set so now that set will be a three-piece set <laughs> now adding the shower rack here and 
you can see on the wall how grimy it is and that is a result from actually in trying to install the shower bar and having to do it multiple times and that is what happened the glue began to build up and it just got really grimy and I just went with it and so I'm, I added a little bit more aging to it and left it <laughs> and that's what happened now the shower head is made from an antique metal button and an added bead and then a piece of wire and the water pipes here now I was just learning how to do these when I did this and I'm not completely happy with them but I'm not going to remove them because it is part of the learning progress and the learning process and then later on down the road I can see how much I've progressed so I'm just going to do a little bit of aging maybe around the brackets and whatnot and then just leave that as is I've also created those little um, hanging pictures there, the little bathroom decor, with some charms and lace and little wood pieces I had. And I just thought they would make nice bath decor. I mean, maybe, you know, they, these are things from her ancestry or something like that. I <laughs> just, yeah. <laughs> but um, I really love the doorknobs. They're. I love the little details on them and I'm going to have to go back in and age them up because they do look brand new. And here is the radiator that came in the Christenbahn kit here. And I've aged it slightly with a little bit of rust, just enough to say, hey, it's old, but it's still usable. And I will be putting a radiator in the bedroom, but in the sewing room, I will be adding a heating vent. And so the heating vents will be on that side of the house, whereas the radiators will be on this end of the house. And that's just, you know, they haven't gotten to that side of the house yet to actually update that a little bit. So there's still some radiators over there. Now going under, under the sink here, um, she's, I'm just trying to show you what the pipes look like and how I've painted those and I tried to paint those to look like the varnish was coming off of that metal there and it starts to start to corrode a little so it has a textured look to it I can I can remember what that feels like and then her cleaning supplies her laundry box of Lux now going up to the sink the sink is pretty grimy tiny friends it is grimy up here and there's a lot of hard water stains there's a dirty scrub bar there a little cleaning rag face rag and then up to the cabinet here that comes in the Chris and Bond kit now they do put a real piece of glass in the kit so that's a real glass mirror unfortunately the cabinet does not open I really wish it did because I would stock that thing but it doesn't open and I have just slightly aged the mirror around the corners a little bit around the frame there because I still want her to be able to use it but I still needed it to look old and that's what happens with old mirrors they start to wear away on the one side and it takes the reflection right off so that's what I've done for the mirror and on top we have some things here a super jumbo box an out of scale size band-aid box with some band-aids and that's okay because you can get a jumbo large box of band-aids I'm sure even back then maybe economy size or wholesale I don't know there's an old bottle of brute there that I've had since the early 90s and that was her husband's but in the early 90s it was a trending cologne for guys and then there's a little toiletry bottle up there I'm not sure what it is but here you can see the inside of the water tank and there's some green grime growing in there and I just remember seeing that sometimes in a toilet tank so I added that in just in case you know just to give the viewers some sort of detail in there because there's no cover 
and you really can't see unless you look in there. And going down to the toilet here, just down the wall, and I did the same thing with this pipe as I did with the sink pipes. So I'm gonna try and show you what this toilet looks like. And you have to, yes, it is horrible. There is a lot of hard water stains in this toilet. And um, it could use a bit of a cleaning. But that toilet, I don't know, I wouldn't want to use that toilet. <laughs> there is some resin in there for water. And it is really, she needs a new toilet. She's upgrade her toilet here. The little Comet can there, the cleansing powder, um, has a metal lid, so because of the moisture in the bathroom, it's begun to rust a bit. And this bathroom holds a lot of moisture. There's not a ventilation fan. I don't think they had those back then. So it just stays in there and rusts any bit of metal or anything that it can try and rust. Now, this little trash basket here I do have a few available as well and I have a few different styles of the basket itself and this one was made to look like an old metal ca trash can and oh my goodness look at that toilet I can't stop looking at it but the trash can is filled with toiletries made from polymer clay and a vintage magazine and just empty toilet paper rolls. It also comes with the two that you see on the floor as well. So here's a little shelf I was inspired by from a Pinterest photo. And I don't really like the decal on the front, so I'm gonna change that with a little bit of paint. And she's got some of her beauty supplies here, a little jar of cold cream that was made out of polymer clay, a little Avon powder jar, a cotton, ball jar made from wooden bees and antique an antique button I had and a lotion bottle and some Epsom salt and I just made these things out of my supplies there's also a little Barbie mirror there that I haven't done anything with yet I just put that on the shelf and these little decals these little picture frames here were made from the decals that came from the Chris and Bond bathroom kit and I decided to make little pictures and I just thought that they would make better use as pictures instead of decals on the accessories but that little piece in the middle is just some air dried clay on a piece of wood and I thought maybe again that could be some sort of symbol from her ancestry so the clothing line here and I definitely needed to put one in I just didn't have a lot of space and I couldn't put it up so high because it still had to make sense that she could reach it. But I made this little garter belt when I made the bullet bra and I made the little clothes pins there and I paired this garter belt into a three piece set. So with this comes a bullet bra and the half slip that you'll see hanging here. And that also is available on my website. And again, these are my first attempts at making any type of clothing in miniature form. And then I created another little decor piece with air dry clay there. And I also will be creating some faux electrical outlets and those push button light switches to place all around the house. So I'll be creating, creating those as well, but this concludes the tour of the Josephine house. I've showed every room. I really hope you enjoyed this video today. And if you have, please give it a thumbs up and click that like button. And also let me know in the comments below what you liked about the bathroom here. Or if you have any suggestions, that would be great. But I really want to thank you all for being here with me. And I absolutely want to thank everybody that has subscribed because I am just over 100. I just hit 100 and that is super exciting because I am so grateful that you 
decided to come along with me on my journey while I create this 1930s farmhouse. This is going to be so much fun because as you can see, I have so much work to do. I have tons of work to do to fill this house and make it look as realistic as I can. <laughs> but this is my view of what I'm working with here. And when I come back, tiny friends, I'm going to be doing a super fun project. I'm going to put together a Bentley House Minis kit created by my great tiny friend, Ara Bentley. And it's going to be a hall tree. And that is going to go right over there by the front door underneath the stairs. And it's going to be super fun to put together. So definitely come back and see me for that. And until then, tiny friends, you all have a lovely day. I will see you soon. Bye-bye.